Hi, it's Lori. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to focus on correcting for white balance using Lightroom. This is a basic skill that's really going to help take your images to the next level and allow you to customize your images. So let's get started. White balance is an in-camera setting that you can adjust. Some people like to keep their white balance on auto, which is fine. You can also shift it to sunshine, shade is going to give you a little bit more warmth. And then there's some Kelvin numbers and some other details that you can use in camera. But sometimes your lighting changes, um, the colors in the scene change, and it will impact your final image. So I have images that were shot on a light tracing pad. It's a white surface that illuminates light. And you can see as I go through these images, I shot them at different shutter speeds, but I did not change the white balance setting. But there's a big difference in the exposures and the blue tones versus the crisp white tones that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna use this as an example to show you how to alter your white balance in post-processing. So you have several options here in Lightroom. So I'm right here in the develop panel. And the first thing I want to show you is the dropper tool. So the dropper tool allows you to click on that and come over to your image. And this is where you want to pick a target neutral. Now this can be confusing for people. What you want to do is look for an area of gray, neutral gray or white, um, somewhere pretty neutral. But the other thing you want to do is you see those numbers at the bottom. Those are your red, green, and blue tones, and you want to get numbers that are very close together. That's going to help you get the most accurate white balance reading. Um, sometimes the numbers will be very skewed. So now if I actually come over to this flower, you can see how close that is to gray in that one section, and that is almost, almost perfect matching of numbers. So I'm going to click that so you can see what it does. All right, it didn't make much of a change to my image. So, you know, the, the system says that this white balance is then accurate based on that dropper. So I'm gonna bring the dropper tool back over again, and we are gonna look at more in this white bright area. And I'm gonna get try to get the numbers as close as I can, and that's probably gonna do it. Okay, so now that has shifted it. We can see our warmth is a little bit greater. It's definitely a little brighter than it was. So I'll show you before and after. So it did, it did an okay job. I'm gonna go back though, and let's try in a different area of the image. I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna tell it to use this kind of neutral area. I'm gonna try to find a spot with high enough numbers. Those numbers aren't too far off. They're still not as close as I'd like, but let's do that. So pretty similar to what we did before. Okay, so I'm gonna undo. So that's using the dropper tool. You also have this custom option. So if you shoot your images in RAW, you can come over and you can then try different settings here under auto. So we can do daylight, it's gonna give it a little bit more blue. Cloudy, we've got shade, it's gonna give it some warmth. Tungsten, ooh, very blue. So that might be something creative if you wanna play with. Fluorescent isn't bad. Flash is probably the most neutral. And then of course, custom. All right, so I'm going to go back and take it back to our original image. Let's go back to the beginning. So you've got the dropper tool, you've got the as shot button, and then you have your temp temperature sliders, temp tent sliders. So this is really what I like to use the most. And what I like to do is come in, and for this image, I don't want the blue tones. So what I'm gonna do is pull the warmth over to more of the yellow tones to get rid of that blue. Now the tint is probably fine. I don't wanna add green to the image, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Now at this point, I can come in and continue to alter. I can bring up my whites to really brighten that background and give it a little pop of exposure. And now I've got the image to what I really wanted, which is very similar to images that I shot at a different setting. So we can see that we were able to make some changes from before to after using our white balance. Now these techniques work with any image. So if I come over to another image, maybe something that was um, shot outdoors, and I want to modify this white balance, again, I could use the dropper tool and I can come over and try to find a spot that's pretty close to neutral. I might even wanna come down here, 
Those numbers look pretty good. Click on that, and it really didn't make a whole lot of change. You can see it gave it a little more um, warmth versus the blue. So that would be one option. Um, I can also just play with these sliders. So if I wanted the image to be a little more on that warm side, or I could add a little more coolness to it, which I actually like with this magenta. You can also play with um, using the tint and temp to reduce the green if I want, um, which I actually like as well. Now we could also use custom, and so you've got those options. Let's see what it does to do shade. Oh, look at all that warmth it added. So we don't want that. Daylight is pretty close to what, what we had. Again, I may want to add a little more coolness and a little bit um, less green. So let's look at another image. Let's come over and try something different. Let's try this one. And if we use the dropper tool, we could come over and try to find again a spot. Um, that's pretty good. And I like what it did. So look at the before and look at the after. It, it almost brightened the image. It's kind of um, interesting how it did that, just altering the white balance. So I think that's um, definitely a nice effect and I like it. You can still, once you use the dropper tool, you can still come in and play with your sliders if you wanted a little more warmth. Um, I really like that glow, so I think that was a nice enhancement to the image. Now, you do not have to modify your white balance on every image. I typically make small, small tweaks. Again, just really small adjustments unless I shot the image totally wrong or it just is way too warm or too cool then I'll sometimes use the dropper. So I hope this gives you a little bit of information on your white balance and just making sure it's best to get it right in camera, but when it doesn't work, you can always come in here and try correcting it right here in Lightroom.